Hello, my name is Toby Thaler. I'm vice chair of the 36th District Democrats. And tonight we are interviewing candidate Jorge Barron for King County District 4 council member. So it's all yours, your floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you, Toby, um, and thank you all of you for uh, all of your participation and your help. And Toby, thank you to you for stepping in as vice chair and putting, you know, uh, putting you on the spot uh, to lead this discussion. Um, as you heard, my name is Jorge Baron, uh, and I'm running to serve you on the King County Council. And I, I'm running because I believe that together we can build a stronger, more just future for all families in King County. As an immigrant who arrived in the United States from Colombia at the age of 13 and who was bullied for not speaking English, I understand the importance of confronting injustice and the challenges faced by marginalized communities. Throughout my legal career, I've dedicated myself to working on behalf of those communities, leading the Northwest Immigrant Rights Project for the past 15 years. I have a proven track record of building coalitions and achieving policy change, and I will bring these skills to tackle the challenges our, our county faces. Uh, as an outsider uh, to government, I bring fresh perspectives to county policymaking. I'm supported by leaders like Representative Pramila Jayapal and Councilmember Teresa Mosqueda, who have challenged the political establishment and driven positive change. In my campaign, I'm focused on three priorities. First, we must bring renewed urgency to generating new progressive revenues for the county to be able to make the necessary investments to make progress in a range of policy issues from homelessness to climate justice. And I know we'll touch on that soon, so I'll say more about that later. Second, I recognize that so many of the challenges we face as a county and as a society are driven by the ongoing impact of systemic racism. I believe it is essential to use a racial justice lens when evaluating policies in all issues areas. And third, my vision for King County is grounded on the value that our success as a community depends on the well-being of every one of our neighbors. This means ensuring that all residents of the county have access to affordable housing, a healthy environment, a fair criminal legal system, and reliable transportation options. With my unique perspective, professional lived experience, and commitment to justice, I'll work tirelessly to create a more equitable and inclusive King County that serves the needs of all of its residents. Thank you again. Well, thank you very much. The first question will be asked by Ginny. Hi, all right. The county budget is mostly reliant on sales tax and property tax for its revenues. How can the county make its revenues more progressive? Well, thank you for that question. And, you know, I, I so appreciated seeing this at the top of your list of questions, because this is really, honestly, one of the main reasons that I that I am running is because of the deep frustration that I have with the situation that the county has been facing for many years. When I started working as executive director of Northwest Midwest Project, I would be going to county hearings uh, where we're discussing cuts to uh, human services. And the presentation has always talked about the structural deficit that the county has because of the restrictions on revenue at the state level. Uh, and I think we've, in some ways, you know, that's been happening for many years, and we've 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 made cuts to a number of areas um, in in terms of services. Uh, but I think we're we're now, I think, because of inflation, we're really hitting the wall that I think many of us have been seeing coming for many years, uh, because the cost, of course, of providing services is increasing. Uh, and now, and our population is increasing, but our revenues are just not keeping pace. And uh, one of the reasons that actually prompted me to uh, decide to run is, is seeing the, the announcement that the executive sent out of the survey uh, asking people, you know, what should we prioritize out of, you know, the cuts that are coming for $100 million in the coming, in the coming uh, biennium. And, you know, you look at that list and you think like that this is, we should not be cutting any of those things on the list because we should be investing in more resources there. Um, and so I, I was very frustrated to see that message. And I felt like we needed people who could have the conversation, bring the issue to voters, and also who had the experience of building this a coalition that I believe is gonna be necessary to make the policy change at the state level in order to get the progressive revenue options for the county. So. Uh, the reason that I feel like I'm the best candidate to do that is because of the of how I have built coalitions at the state level, the relationships I've built with legislators to make sure and work with them in partnership to open up options for the for the county. Thank you. Next question will be asked by Alex. 
Hi, Jorge. Could you please share your vision for King County Metro and how you will ensure that Seattle will have efficient, safe, connected, reliable, and regular transit? As part of this, uh, we would like to know how you will address the impacts of the pandemic and the shifting work patterns. Thank you for that. Um, so for me, this is an issue that, you know, we feel deeply in our family. Uh, you know, I take the bus every day downtown to work. I take the, the one or the two. Uh, my daughter, Luna, uh, she actually attends Nathan Hale, and she has to take two different buses in order to get to Nathan Hale in the morning and then back in the afternoon and we're conscious of the fact that you know we, we rely on that uh and and we want there to be a reliable uh, transit but i'm also very conscious of the fact that we have the privilege that you know if if a, a bus isn't running you know we have the car and we might be able to get there if there's a there's an urgent time uh or you know my my wife may be able to drive luna to school or i might be able to get uh, luna back home from from school uh, whereas a lot of other families around the county don't have that option, right? If they miss that bus, uh, they may be late to work and that could lead to them losing their employment. And so my vision is one that prioritizes making sure that we have reliable transit for the communities that rely most deeply on, on transit uh, patterns. I think the, the challenge that we're facing right now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of changes that, that our society has experienced, our county and, you know, the whole country has experienced because of the pandemic where we're still trying to figure out and analyze what the new reality is going forward with, with a lot of hybrid work. Uh, we've certainly seen it in my workplace and going downtown, you see the differences in, in, in ridership from a Monday to a Wednesday. And so I think we're gonna have to have constructive conversations and engage as many stakeholders as possible in these conversations. But the other issue that I see right now with King County Metro, of course, as, you, as I know, I'm sure you all know, we're facing the prospect of, of uh, we're, we're now going to see 4% reductions, and the main issue is a shortage of workers. Um, that's the reason that we're losing those, those uh, that we're sort of going backwards. So we need to invest resources on having our staffing. I think childcare needs to be part of that, making more investments in childcare to be able to make sure that we have the workers that we need available uh, to support the system. Okay, thank you. Uh, Amanda will ask the next question. The King County Council will be responsible for oversight and implementation of the crisis care centers levy. How will you ensure that placement of the centers is equitable and has support from the local community? And how will you ensure that the levy is, con is a connected, coherent step toward a broader system to uphold mental health and address behavioral health? Well, I am, you know, very grateful that the, our, our, all of our neighbors voted to support this because I was a strong supporter of that proposal, and I'm grateful that this resource is going to come into the community. I know we have a, a lot of work ahead now to implement it, uh, and I will say it's something that's that I feel deeply personal because in our family, one of our children has has needed mental health uh, support, and uh, there have been situations where we we felt like that you know despite all of the resources that we have available that we didn't have access to kind of immediate uh, resources in a moment of crisis. Uh, and I can only imagine what it's like for families who don't have the resources that, that, that we have the privilege of accessing. Um, so for me, having the system be set up in a way that's gonna be accessible to, a, to all of the very diverse communities of the county is really important. I think that's gonna require a lot of engagement and, and people who can connect. I think it's important, of course, to bring the existing uh, providers of mental health resources, and they're obviously going to be an important stakeholder in helping create this, this new system. But I think one of the things that I found working in the nonprofit sector is that oftentimes uh, those of us that are providing services are only seeing kind of a, a small sliver of the need in the community because the resources are so limited. And so I, I absolutely want to make sure that the process through which this new uh, implementation model happens will engage communities that currently don't have access to health services. I mean, I would say, for example, people who are undocumented have a very, very limited access to be able to access mental health. And so I'm concerned that their voices would not be heard in the conversation if we're only talking to current service providers. So I want to make sure that we, we do a, a deep dive with those communities that currently are underserved that is not an easy process, but it requires having people who have been in community, who have established those relationships with uh, with uh, grassroots groups. And that's how I intend to make sure those voices are at the table. Thank you very much. 
The final question about the murderous carceral system will be Jasmine. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, six people have died at the King County Jail over the last year. What will you do to address overcrowding and safety at the jail and any other uh, private facilities contracted by King County? Please respond to this question with the context of your broader perspective and values around the criminal legal and public uh, system and public safety. Well, again, thank you for asking the in this issue, because this is uh, something that I feel very strongly about. I started my career at NERP um, working in uh, helping people who are in the Northwest Detention Center. Um, I worked, I spent both of my summers in law school working in the in the South, representing people who are facing the death penalty and seeing, you know, awful prison conditions there. And I absolutely think that this is one of those issues where we need to be uh, going from from critical values from core values. And what I would say is that, you know, we might disagree on a lot of things, but I'd like to think that the following, you know, premise is not controversial. That if we as a community decide that we're going to deprive one of our neighbors of their liberty, that then we become responsible to make sure that we are taking care of them and that they're going to be safe while they're in, in, our, in our custody, right? And unfortunately, we're not meeting that reality right now. And so um, I appreciate that the executive has taken some steps in trying to hold the state accountable for some of their failings to be able to um, make sure they have their there's treatment and, and evaluations happening through the state system that is responsible for some of uh, some of the things that have happened. But I, I don't think that that's sufficient. I do think that when with the situation that we have right now, that we need to look at booking restrictions. Um, it's something that Pierce County has done. Interestingly, that Pierce County has actually taken further steps uh, to reduce the number of people in the jail. And I realize that some people, you know, feel like that's not appropriate because, you know, it means that people are not being held accountable. But I, I want to emphasize that the, these are folks who are accused of a crime. Um, and while they may be serious, for example, nonviolent felonies, um, that, that, you know, I would say should be restricted from being uh, pl placed in the jail when we don't have the capacity or the or the sufficient staffing to hold them. I don't think it should be a death sentence for those people uh, because uh, because of that accusation. Thank you. Now we will have follow up questions, and I will look for hands. I gotta scroll over to the left, and Jeremy has his hand up. Um, so, um, I think you, uh, were sort of starting to run out of time as you were getting to this part of your answer, but can you go into a little bit more detail about, um, with the, uh, bus driver shortage, uh, what you would do to address it? Yeah. I mean, what, I, I'm a big believer in investing in workforce. So, um, I look, for example, at the example of, of Los Angeles that was also facing a driver shortage and they, had you know incentives um, and spending uh, increasing uh, the rates uh, the the you know pay rates for people. Um, one of the things that I've talked to a lot of from our folks in the labor community, for example, has been that one of the challenges is that is the childcare crisis, right? That people are making the calculation that they can't afford to go to work um, because if they do, the cost of uh, of actually getting childcare is you know makes it like not make economic sense. And so I think we need to be creative in trying to figure out what it's needed to make sure that workers in the community are able to take on those jobs because we need people to be able to, to have a transit system. So um, those are the kind of things I, I want to try to connect those dots because when people think transportation, they may not be thinking childcare, but there's definitely a connection there when there's people who are not, who are not um, a, we don't have the, enough workers available. I'm calling on myself. What's your plan to get through the primary? Do you have a campaign plan? You're a little late to the show here. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to explain a little bit of the lateness of it. Uh, the reason that I entered late is honestly because I had to prioritize my work at Northwest Migrant Rights Project. I when I when I find out about Jeannie's retirement, I was um you know, working uh, very hard in the legislative session for my client community that I that I represent under the Thorson Human Rights Project. We were in a very busy period. 
we had our annual fundraiser and I, I basically decided I couldn't be a good campaigner and a good e executive director at the same time. So I prioritize being executive director. And if that means that I don't, you know, make it through, I'm, I'm comfortable with that decision because my clients came first. Um, but I do have a plan. And I do think that I, I, uh, I've actually, in the last six days, I can share that I've raised $51,000 in six days. Um, and so I think for the community response has been really positive. Uh, you know, I have the support of people like Representative Pramila Jayapal that, that, that I value and, and somebody that, it, you know, I'd like to model myself after. So, uh, yes, I hope I'll be successful. But thanks for that. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Sherry, will ask the next. Hi, um, you mentioned uh, your, that the progressive revenue is really the most important thing. Can you give us an example or two of what options you would pursue? Uh, I assume you have to do this through the state. I don't know if there's anything you can do at the county level, but something. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate that question. And 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 listen, I know that doing that is going to take some time. I will tell you that I've also supported, for example, I was supporting the increase, uh, an increase in the rate to the human services levy. And and I was, uh, you know, torn a little bit about that, I will tell you, because um, I know that that's a, a regressive form of taxation ultimately, and it does impact low-income communities and renters. Um, but but because the benefit goes to people who are marginalized, I felt comfortable with advocating for an increase there. But what I would like to see is for the county to have more progressive uh, revenue options. I, I would like to see something uh, similar to to the jumpstart uh, tax that the city has implemented. I would like to see those kind of options that create uh, revenue, uh, but doing so without having the kind of the progressive impact. And of course, you know, I could tell, talk for hours about what I'd like the state to do at the state level in terms of uh, income taxation, uh, because we really need to address this at a much higher level, of course. Okay, uh, Laura Marie is next. Hi, uh, my favorite thing to learn from a candidate is what aspect of the job are you most looking forward to? And what is something that you think a lot of voters may not be aware of? How about me, I'm, I'm guessing, right? <laughs> oh, actually, I meant about the job. Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, you know, the, I think the thing that I'm most excited uh, about is, uh, you know, being able to to spend the time to connect with community and learn about new issues, uh, to be honest. I, I have been very focused on immigration policy. Uh, and so for me, I am excited to uh, use the expertise uh, and what I've gained uh, in the last uh, 17 years at my job at Northwestern Human Rights Project and put that to use uh, for uh, the, you know continuing to to pursue the social justice uh, values that I've been working on for the last 17 years, but just in different policy areas. So I'm excited about that. Um, I think the thing that uh, you know I've talked to people that there's there's issues where you know you might not expect like uh, wastewater management. That you know frankly I'm, it's not my area of expertise. Um, but uh, but I think it's super important, and I'm excited to uh, to delve into those issues and um, and learn more. And I'm a learner, so I'm looking forward to to this challenge. Okay, Barbara gets the last question. Yeah, unmute. No, so I'm sorry, I can't. I, I can hear you, Barbara. Oh, okay, great. So I'm so sorry. I'm having a plague of locusts in my um, digital devices. So Jorge, I, um, uh, District 4 of the King County Council is not completely, but very largely um, covers the 36th district where we're speak from where we're speaking tonight. And I wonder if you could give us an idea, um, thinking about the uh, community of the 36th, the demographics of the 36th, um, how would you apply your values and some of your priorities um, to issues and people that are um, in front of us in the 36th district. I'd really like to hear you 
connect the two because I'm very impressed with your platform. Well, I appreciate it. And, and Barbara, to me, uh, I am a big believer that in, in community, right? I, I, you know, was fortunate to come to United States uh, as an immigrant and uh, make a life here. And I experienced those feelings of, uh, you know, people perceiving me as the other initially, but there were also a lot of people who, who welcomed me. And frankly, you know, one of the reasons that I want to run was because of the response of this community to the Trump administration and seeing the incredible outpouring and welcoming of this community and the values. And, you know, we did all these events uh, around like family separation and, and house parties and having conversations. And I just the reason that I love being in this community and made a, a life here now is because because of those values that I feel like I share. And uh, and to me, I think many of us in this district and this in this area want to see a better community that lives up to the values to the name of our county, right? Of Dr. King's County, and so I, that's what I want to pursue, and I hope it will resonate with people in the district. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the conversation, and uh, and as soon as the recording's off, we'll have a debrief on the process.